What's up everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. 2018 is drawing to a close, and that means as has become tradition on the channel, that it's time once again to look into next year and see what horror films we have to look forward to in 2019. As has become the norm, there is a huge amount of new genre content coming your way, including anticipated sequels, reboots, and some new stories as well. Hollywood does do those too, sometimes. For this list, I try to present a varied look at the entire spectrum of the genre, including the biggest and most exciting horror movies of 2019. Let's get going. It's not too long into the year that we already have a big release with Glass on January 18th. The conclusion of a trilogy of films uniting characters from Split and Unbreakable, this looks to be a thrilling and exciting crossover. It's enough just for James McAvoy's many personalities as Kevin, but the return of Bruce Willis's super strong David Dunn and Samuel L. Jackson's fragile super genius Mr. Glass as new adversaries and allies for the Beast really takes the world of the films to a new level. And unsurprisingly, Glass is said to feature a trademark massive Shyamalan twist that I'm sure will throw the whole thing for an unexpected loop. What better way to spend Valentine's Day than watching a young woman be murdered over and over by a baby mask wearing killer? The first Happy Death Day was a lot of fun and the sequel Happy Death Day to You looks to really be going all out with its time loop shenanigans. But this time with the returning killer going after all of Tree's friends. And according to the writer-director, he described the film as being akin to Back to the Future 2. So I'd wager this one has some surprising and creative time tricks up its sleeve. Writer slash director and don't forget comedian Jordan Peele took the horror world by storm with his feature debut Get Out in 2017, even winning an Oscar for Best Screenplay. So it's obviously exciting that his follow-up Us is coming this March and looks to be another twisted and introspective nightmare, pitting a group of vacationers against an odd foe, doppelgangers of themselves called the tether similar in appearance but with murderous intent the idea of ourselves being our own worst enemies brought to life in terrifying fashion there's no doubt in my mind this will be another big hit for Peel who is quickly proving himself one of the most interesting and compelling directors around sometimes dead is better sorry I had to yep the Stephen King adaptations will continue for eternity and this year brings us a redo of pet cemetery where a cursed burial ground brings back a family's deceased cat church but something about him seems different when he Return. While the 80s movie wasn't the best, it did have many memorable moments. Though I'm more than interested to see a new take on the material. I'm more open-minded here too as it's being directed by the team behind the excellent body horror flick Starry Eyes, and I'm really hoping they can bring some of that twisted energy to Pet Cemetery instead of merely being a modern redux. Based on Latin American folklore, La Lorana, or the Weeping Woman, is a vengeful spirit who lost her children. And in the curse of La Lorana, the spirit turns her anger onto a social worker and her own children drawing them into a frightening supernatural realm. While the teaser trailer did have some decent jump scares and the weeping woman appearance was adequate, I wouldn't say this looks particularly inspired based on the footage. But I'm still optimistic, as it was due to WB's confidence in this film that director Michael Chavez was given the coveted job of directing The Conjuring 3. So it's gotta at least be pretty good, right? And it appears there's more connections to the Conjuring universe as well, with a character from Annabelle, Father Perez, having an important part in this movie. So I guess it technically takes place in the same universe as The Conjuring, which is an interesting, if a bit odd choice. Who doesn't love a good monster movie? And Godzilla King of the Monsters looks to deliver a ton of big scale monster mayhem, which was sorely absent in the 2014 original. Here we have the return of the monarch organization of that film, including Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins, but now other slumbering titans beyond the big green start to surface around the world, which could naturally prove disastrous for mankind. The trailer looked great, especially the new versions of classic villains Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah given a nice looking big budget makeover. But the human cast ain't half bad either, with Vera Farmiga and Stranger Things breakout Millie Bobby Brown playing a mother and daughter caught in the middle of these dadgum giant monsters. I'm also rooting for this one as it's the first huge movie being helmed by Michael Doherty who is behind Trick or Treat and Cramp and I'm really rooting for the dude to pull it off, and it looks like he has. The scale of this looks insane, and I can't wait to see all these monster brawlers duking it out on the big screen this summer. If you've been waiting for those freakishly long-haired Japanese ghosts of the Grudge series to return, you're in luck, as this summer a new entry is coming in the series 10 years after the Grudge 3. Originally planned as a total reboot, the rumor is that this might instead be a sequel to the original trilogy, though at this point we have no idea as there is no trailer or footage to speak of. As the American series got worse with each entry, there is a pretty good chance this could be a major improvement, and at least features genre staples Lynn Shea from the Insidious films and John Cho amongst the cast. Perhaps 
this will be a worthy return for the long-suffering ghost of the grudge. I'm not too sure how I feel about this reboot of the Child's Play series, because Chucky is alive and well in a series still going, headed by creator Don Mancini. It's hard to imagine a Child's Play movie happening without him being involved, though it seems like they're at least trying to update some key components. Our evil doll Chucky is no longer under the voodoo possession of a serial killer, but is instead a highly sophisticated AI toy that runs him up. Without any footage released yet, it's hard to pass judgment on this one at this point, but it will certainly be difficult for them to do something worthwhile in their take. 2018's The Conjuring spin-off The Nun was the biggest hit in the history of the franchise, and the series shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon, with the third Annabelle coming this summer. While I didn't care for the first Annabelle, the sequel was a massive improvement and hopefully the third will follow suit, and does have the benefit this time of the return of Ed and Lorraine Warren, so that already makes it much more anticipated for me. The idea sounds interesting enough too, following the Warren's daughter Judy, who finds herself having to deal with the Annabelle doll that has been kept locked up in the family's haunted artifact room, as the demon that inhabits the doll brings all of the artifacts to life in the room, creating a kind of horror take on Night at the Museum for Judy to put a stop to. We'll see how this one turns out, but at least will keep us held over until the eventual The Conjuring 3. Based on a beloved trilogy of novels, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark featured a ton of different stories, many of which were based on real-life folklore and urban legends. I was a huge fan of these as a kid, and apparently Guillermo del Toro is as well, as this has been a long-time passion project for him. We don't know which of the stories will be adapted, or many details at all, really, only that it centers on a group of young teens investigating a wave of horrific murders in their small town. Del Toro's involvement is enough to get me excited for this one, but it's also being helmed by Andre Avradal behind Troll Hunter and the Autopsy of Jane Doe. These two teaming up to adapt these books is why this is one of my most anticipated of the year. Director Ari Aster made quite a huge splash with his debut movie Hereditary. Since it was the biggest hit in indie studio A24's history, Aster quickly went to work on a new film Midsommar, following a couple that travels to Sweden to visit their friend's rural hometown for its fabled Midsummer Festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. Damn pagan Swedes always ruining my vacation. Hereditary was an exceptionally assured debut, so if Midsommar can match those same artistic and terrifying heights, this one will be a can't miss. The modern reimagining of It last year was a box office smash, but as we know, it only told half of the complete story. Which brings us to It Chapter 2, taking place 27 years after the first film, as the now distant Losers Club members find themselves drawn back to Derry, Maine after a tragic event, and have to band together to take down the demonic clown Pennywise once and for all. I was already excited to see this after how well done the first was, but the cast list of adult losers is stacked, with James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, and Bill Hader leading the crew. I mean, it's pretty much the best casting ever, and I'm intrigued to see how the movie, which is promised to be darker and scarier than the first, will be able to up the ante, and hope this really pushes the envelope of terror. In addition to all the newbies, don't worry as all of the already beloved kids cast of part one will return in important flashback sequences. And of course, Bill Skarsgård is back as Pennywise. And less the Muschettis somehow totally blow it, IT Chapter 2 has everything going for it to be one of the biggest and best horror hits of the year. Maybe a little less CG this time would be good too. Unbelievably, the long in development sequel to the cult hit Zombieland is actually supposed to come out on October 11th, 2019. It's filming right now and the original cast is back and everything. Now if you're not familiar, back in 2009, the original Zombieland was a clever and hilarious subversion of the zombie genre, with a winning group of misfit characters who band together and try travel across country in a zombie-filled America. While this sequel definitely feels a few years too late, with the original creative team and cast back, and a plot involving evolved zombies, dangerous survivors, and an ever-difficult family dynamic between the group, it sounds like a lot has changed since we last saw them. Hopefully, Zombieland 2 will be worth the wait. I genuinely feel like I'm a sucker for the Terminator movies at this point, because really only the first two are any good, but they keep coming out with crappy new entries, and I keep going to see them. The new Terminator does have more than usual in its court, with Jimmy Cameron taking time away from his Blue People movies to produce the film, and help construct the story. Also, you can't really make one of these without Schwarzenegger, who is back once again. This time, in addition to his long-missing co-star from the first films, Linda Hamilton coming back as Sarah Connor, which is pretty exciting in and of itself, looking pretty badass in a promo still released. And maybe that means they'll be able to evoke the much higher quality of the first two. Or it's a much higher probability that it ends up being a pointless disappointment that puts the franchise's future into question, as has happened pretty consistently so far. The remaining movies on the list are a few more worth mentioning, but as of right now, don't have 
have confirmed release dates, and thusly might not actually come out in 2019. But based on info right now, should be coming out at some point next year. And right now, most of which are scant on details and footage. The follow-up to the indie hit The Witch, director Robert Eggers returns to horror with The Lighthouse, shot in 35mm black and white using vintage 1920s and 40s lenses, which already makes it sound like it'll look really cool. The plot is currently being kept under wraps, only getting the very general idea that it's the story of an aging lighthouse keeper appropriately named Old, who now lives in 20th century Maine. The brilliantly Twisted Willem Dafoe plays Old, co-starring along with Robert Pattinson, who has gone to show surprising versatility after being in those sparkly vampire movies. If The Lighthouse is anything like the skill and suspenseful style shown in The Witch, this will definitely be one to keep an eye on. Supposedly the sequel to the found footage monstrosity The Gallows is finally being unleashed at some point in 2019. Oddly similar to Unfriended Dark Web that came out this year, but had been in the can for several years prior, The Gallows sequel is in the same situation, sitting on the shelf completed for years years now. I'm not sure why Blumhouse does this, maybe they're doing a bunch of test screenings on it to get it right, but from what I understand, it is coming in 2019. Guess we'll have to wait and see. I'm honestly baffled that there is a sequel to 2016's The Boy existing, not just because the first film was mundane at best, but because the entire plot revolved around thinking that the doll Brahms was possessed, only to learn the thought dead boy was living in the walls of the house. So they can't really do the exact same kind of thing again, though I wouldn't be terribly surprised if that's what ends up happening. Especially as the plot sounds very similar, revolving around a family led by Katie Holmes moving into the Heelshire mansion of the first film, where presumably her son becomes friends with the doll. Yet the mansion was burned down at the end of the first movie, so maybe this is a prequel, because otherwise it already doesn't make a lot of sense. The New Mutants, Fox's horror-centric take on the Marvel comic book universe, was supposed to come out this year, but was delayed indefinitely to do reshoots apparently to play up the horror elements of the film. I was already interested from its original trailer, it has a great cast of mutants and some cool looking evocative horror imagery, so I was disappointed when it was delayed more than once. And with Disney taking over Fox, I wondered if New Mutants would simply disappear forever, but it still appears on track for release at some point this year, and here's hoping that it'll be worth all the extra weight. The 1898 novella The Turn of the Screw is one of the most influential ghost stories of all time featuring a more grounded side of the supernatural rife with gothic horror. Produced by Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment and starring it and Stranger Things' Finn Wolfhard along with Mackenzie Davis, the story has already been adapted several times, this time seemingly with a more modern, decidedly kid-friendly approach. Though since it comes from the writer of The Conjuring films, maybe the new version won't be too toned down, and at least be able to evoke the creepy atmosphere and fear of the unknown of the original. I know there's a ton of Rob Zombie fans out there that would be excited to hear about Three From Hell, which continues the chronicles of the trio of antagonists Captain Spaulding, Otis Driftwood, and Baby Firefly that began with House of a Thousand Corpses and On to the Devil's Rejects. It's still a bit surprising that this is a sequel considering the ending of that movie, but who knows? The new one is called Three from Hell after all. They could be resurrected as crazy killer demons or something. You never know with Rob Zombie. As of right now, there is absolutely nothing known about the plot other than the three original actors are returning for continued murdering misadventures. So we'll have to stay tuned to find out any further details, but I'm definitely curious to see what Zombie has cooked up for these weirdos this time. Okay guys, that'll wrap it up for this look at upcoming horror releases in 2019. While by no means exhaustive, this list is intended to provide you with a look at all the biggest and most important releases in horror, in my opinion, coming next year. Though I'm sure a whole bunch more awesome stuff will come out of nowhere that we know nothing about right now. Since that's kind of how it goes nowadays. Regardless, 2019 is shaping up to be another huge year for the genre, and further proving how important horror has truly become in today's ever-evolving market. Which one of the upcoming releases in 2019 are you most excited about? Are there any that I missed? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time for Bird Box.